Hi, and uh, welcome to fleetmusic.blogspot.com. Um, this evening I'm going to look at um, drum racks. I, um, my kind of point of inspiration is, uh, well, is the drum rack itself, and particularly the way in which it's used in uh, this instance, which comes with uh, Live Suite. Um, what's so good about it is obviously you've got the whole loop contained within this one rack um, and then you just use or you make the most of um, the fact that you built it in a kind of um, <clears throat> if we unfold the chains in a kind of self-similar way um, and then all the 16 instruments within that rack share these same eight parameters and then they're modulated within the clip using the envelopes so if we just look at the envelope um, we go into uh, here. We can see we have these different envelopes drawn, and uh, that allows a rich uh, variation of the sounds. And uh, so I wanted to emulate that, and uh, I was going to do it slightly. And what I chose to do was a slightly kind of um, simpler version of that. Um, I did attempt to make a tutorial out of this, but it's just quite long and. Uh, it doesn't really fit <laughs> within the YouTube video and uh, it was going to take about an hour and it's quite complicated and it's quite dirty along the way because you end up with some really horrible sounds but I'm going to explain how I got to what I got how I got to my end result um, so here, what we have here <coughs> we have just one instrument in the drum rack and that's just the kick um, it's built in the same way as uh, Ableton's uh, kit here, the minimum kit using operator and then a chain of effects after that. Uh, the main parameters from that, from the operator and this and the uh, effects I rooted back to the macros here. So you have control over them. And then I um, duplicated that and changed um, the, uh, the programming of the synth and then subtly made a few subtle adjustments to um, to the effects, uh, but kept the actual order the same, the actual architecture remains the same. Uh, I kind of like the idea of kind of building a sort of self-similar rack um, and um, just kind of letting unexpected results happen. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to play you um, the actual finished loop, which as you can see is a really, really, really simple loop. Um, We've got a kick on the, every beat of the bar. We've got a sub here and here on, on the second and last off beats. We've got a high heat, high heat, high heat, sorry. Uh, <laughs> a high hat on the eighth note. And a little bit of percussion. We've got something on the two and the four. And something uh, on the uh, fourth, sixteenth note. Um, and that works in conjunction uh, with lots of envelopes drawn. So I'm just going to flip through those. And these envelopes are the envelopes which relate to the macro controls in our drum rack. And just as a point of reference, let's play uh, this clip without any uh, without any envelopes. Pretty awful. So you can see it's all about uh, it's all about the modulation. And so I've uh, what I've done a pre-programmed, a pre-assigned, should I say. Uh, the macro controls here to a little controller to my nocturne and uh, I'm just going to demo some of the sounds for you and it's important to kind of remember this is all just a one loop um, and I quite like the fact that sometimes there's good bits and then there's really bad bits uh, and what's happening here is that the control um, well, my controller is affecting these macros which are already being modulated by the envelopes within that clip. I kind of like the kind of infinite range of, or almost infinite range of possibilities that you have. Um, as I said, I did try and do a tutorial, but it's, just, it's quite a long winded process, and I'd recommend that you go back to what we have in, in the second. Uh, channel and, and just build 
you can just duplicate um, that kick and then change the settings and, uh, and follow the steps I've kind of outlined here where you program in the pattern, change the sounds, uh, change the programming of the operator, dial in some initial or draw in some initial envelopes, then use that as the actual kind of jumping off point and then you have kind of have this rich evolving loop which you can kind of infinitely play with. It's quite the combination of the um, time and the pitch sustain is quite good. As we bring those to max values, we have quite out there results. And it's not to say that you only need to um, work in this way, but it's the idea of the kind of what's working with live. Because I think live wants you to work in kind of a modular way. I've always thought, and it kind of rewards that um, as a as a kind of working process. I found anyway. Uh, and so feel free to kind of change the effects, but um, I kind of like the way it's kind of a bit like automatic writing. You kind of kind of let complexity happen a bit. Anyway, um, <clears throat> just for a few minutes I'm going to guide you guys through that. So, um, or at least what I'll do first, I'll just show you what I mean. So, I'll upload this so everyone can kind of repeat. Um, so the first step I did from here was just to Apple D duplicate that, then change this field here, and then um, move it to the next note above, so C sharp 1. This note here is the actual note that's being played. So if we look into the clip, we can see we've got another thing called kick. We're just going to... Um, let me duplicate this whole thing, actually. Um, we're just going to um, go in here and change this to... Let's call it perk. Perk01, something very generic. And then we're going to move the actual note that's playing up to suit something in the mid-range. Um, let's see, yeah, yeah. Let's go for D. Um, let's actually get the right... Right. Uh, MIDI track going. And it's nothing more complex than this really. I kind of just went in and um, just changed the programming. And then I did, um, in some instances I'd move the dry wet. You'll be able to see that from the example which I'm going to upload. Um, I then um, repeated that process, making sure that um, I got the assignments right. Um, I then, then I, I actually, to get an idea of what I was doing, I started, what you need to do, you need to take this right up to the max value, and then right click on it, sorry about that, and uh, go to modulate. start drawing in the envelopes. It's quite nice also if you modulate over the duration of the notes and you get quite drastic changes. Let's just arbitrarily do that. I mean there we can see now that we've modulated that the actual value is changing over time. Just right click on this, go to show modulation, just draw in any old thing. For me what's kind of really rich about it, you can never really predict the outcome uh, because you had so many kind of things working in conjunction with one another uh, and I kind of enjoy the unexpected. So. So yeah, um, it does get a bit crazy, um, but you can kind of 
get useful moments and kind of enjoyable moments. Hopefully you agree and uh, hopefully you enjoy this little posting. Um, as I said, I'm going to upload this so you'll be able to download it and uh, give me your feedback. Okay, and uh, yeah, be sure to check out my SoundCloud site. The details are on fleetmusic.blogspot.com. Uh, Okay, thank you. Cheers.